Stay right there. Stay right there. You are listening to Hindsight Radio. Peace, peace, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to the Truth Tuesday show with your host, Hakeem L. On Hindsight Radio, the information station changing the nation. I hope everybody's doing very well, living prosperous, not only in uh, monetary ways, but in spiritual ways. Because, you know, the only way you're going to keep that money keep your sanity is to be spiritually grounded. So I hope everybody's uh, keeping a check on their spirituality. You know, I love that song, Tasha Cobb. She says, fill me up until I overflow. You know, every time I listen to that song, it, it, it just, you know, reminds me of, the work that needs to be done. Not just in me, but in everyone else. We all got a lot of work to do. Uh, Reminding ourselves how much we have to be thankful for and to keep our minds renewed and uh, every day to keep ourselves out of the trap of getting caught up in our egos. But it also reminds me of how sometimes you can get down, you can get disappointed, you can get weary because you can give so much of yourself and pretty much it's a thankless job. You know, you get people who thank you, come and they say certain things, say, you know, I thank you. Yeah, that's good. Um, Me and a brother was talking about this yesterday. A lot of times people who come with those high, really high praises, they're they're pretty much a lot of those high praises are fake praises. Um, The real praise is when you're showing people what to do and they go and apply it. That's the real praise. That's the real things. When you see them living out the teachings, because you guys probably hear it. There's people who come on the show, they think, and, and then you, they're not even applying any of the principles that I'm teaching. But, yeah, I've been following you forever and this and all of this craziness. And you go look and you check the accounts. They haven't purchased one thing from you. And a lot of that's going on. A lot of that fakery is going on. And like I said, this is 2021. This is the year. I took a sabbatical from calling certain things out, but that that time is over. You know, you want to come on this show, I'm only dealing with the real folks, the ones that really want change, the, the ones that's going to apply the change, who want to raise up from their Lazarus ways. Like, King, what do you mean by Lazarus? What is the Lazarus ways? I, I'll prove it to you. I'll read it out of the book of John. Remember, Lazarus was the one Christ raised from the dead. See, a lot of us are dead in our thinking. And for some reason, this dead thinking think they're alive. They, 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 they really believe they're doing something. But when you look at the fruits of their life, there is no evidence of them applying the principles. They are still living in the same condition they was living in five, six, seven, eight years ago. And if you going to kid yourself and think that you have accomplished something and nothing has changed in that amount of time and you call yourself a follower, someone who applies to principles, then you're lying to yourself. You're not fooling me. You're not fooling you. You're not even fooling some of the listeners that be be listening on. See, I'm only saying all these things because it's either you're going to start applying the principles or go somewhere else and listen. Because the movement that's happening here in hindsight is about progress. 
Not about sitting there talking about doing stuff. We talk. We we not only speaking it, we're acting it. And this 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 uh private class that I'm doing, premium membership I'm doing, really shows me the real people who want to make a change in their life, who want to make a difference. It really is exposing things. I am really thankful that the spirit moved me to start this premium membership because it's, it's, it's for the whole part. It's a, it's, it's a, a complete success. But back to this dead thinking, I guess the best way I can do it is to even just read from the book of John. John chapter 11, it says the death of Lazarus. And that's what we got. We got the people, our people are dead, just like Lazarus in their thinking. Yeah, when you see them physically, they look alive, but their life, their spiritual life doesn't reflect it. They're operating selfishly. Looking to get over on their, 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 get over on whoever they can get over on. And think their their slick words is going to make a difference. All right, here we go. Verse 1. At this time, a man named Lazarus was sick. Lazarus re- represents people who are sick, who don't know that God works through them. And eventually, if you live out this sickness, the sickness of believing that you are you are not God in the flesh, you are not a divine creation of God, and so for, so that God works through you, that sickness is going to lead to death. He lived in Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary, whose brother Lazarus was sick, was to anoint the Lord with perfume and wipe his feet with her hair. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. See, the mastermind, the true creator of all things, loves all. And he knows you're sick. When Jesus heard this, he said, the sick, this sickness will not end in death. No, it is for the glory of God so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. See, the Christ mind already knew well, I'm, I'm, this is going to be taken care of. See, this is how we have to start thinking. That when we are in our minds have this, this sickness of we're less than what God made us to be. We have this sickness of fear of moving forward into the things that is going to make us better or do better for ourselves and our family. Those are all sicknesses. Because you're supposed to have dominion over all things. And the very first thing you need to have dominion over is your mind, your thoughts how you're perceiving things. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Lazarus. And on hearing that Lazarus, Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was for two days. And then he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. You see, people are coming to you all from uh, your family, your mom, your dad, your, your your husband, your wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, Brothers and sisters, they all come into you sick with these th- sick thoughts. I can't do this. I can't. I can't. Um, that ain't going to work. This is hard. These are all sickness. These are, these are all sicknesses of the mind. Not knowing their true power. Rabbi, they replied, the Jews just tried to stone you, and you are going back there. See, Christ didn't care. They tried to get him. They tried to kill him. But he knew his power. He knew what needed to be done. He needed to show this example that the dead can come back to life. Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours of daylight? If anyone walks in the daytime, he will not stumble because he sees by the light of this world. 
But if anyone walks at night, he will stumble because he has no light. After he had said this, he told them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to wake him up. See, like I said, Lazarus represents all of us being awakened from a deep coma, a deep sleep. Now, some of us are somewhat awakened. And I won't be so uh, bold to say that I'm fully awake. I'm still waking up myself. But I'm awoke enough that, hey, I see that a lot of other people are still sleeping, do not realize the power. They do not realize that God is in them. God works through them. Everything they're seeing, everything they're having, or all the experience that they are experiencing is as a, a result of their God power, like it or not. His disciples replied, Lord, if he is sleeping, he will get better. They thought that Jesus was talking about actual sleep, but he was speaking about the death of Lazarus. He was speaking about the dead mindset. That mindset that has fear, that mindset that is always negative, that mindset that is judgmental towards others, that mindset that wants to seek revenge if someone does does them wrong, that mindset that believes that it that is weak that's the dead mindset uh where was i so jesus told them plainly lazarus is dead and for your sake i'm glad i was not there so that you may believe but let us go to him then thomas called didymus said to his fellow disciples, let us also go so that we may die with him. So Jesus comforts Martha and Mary. Let me go back to that. He said, let us go so that we may die with them. So what are they going to die? Are they going to die away from their own doubt and fears and be resurrected to light? When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already spent four days in the tomb. Now, Bethany, that's four days. Remember I said four days represents completeness. I said this last week. I mentioned it partially last week. These all numbers that represent stuff. And I know I said last week I would we decipher those numbers that were mentioned in the scripture that I let last week. But like always, the spirit has a, the ancestors have another agenda. So here we go. Now, Bethany was near Jerusalem, a little less than two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them in the loss of their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you have been here, my brother would have not have died. But even now, I know that God would give you whatever you ask of him. Your brother will rise again, Jesus told her. Martha replied, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection of the last day. Jesus said to her, said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will live even though he dies. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? My question is, do you believe this? What is he talking about? Whoever believes in me will live even though he dies. See, even though you have these dead mindsets, but then you come to the realization that you are the Christ that you're looking for, you live. You begin to live a life of prosperity. You begin to live a life of abundance. You begin to take advantage of your inheritance. Because you can never inherit anything that this Abrahamic trust has for you until you realize and come out of your dead thinking. And what, let, let me give you some prime example of these dead thinkings. Like, 
this whole idea that Biden or Trump can save you. These governmental officials and their rules and regulations can fix your problems. They haven't fixed your problems since the day you was born. They haven't fixed your parents' problems. They haven't fixed your ancestors' problems. So why do people keep believing in these people? I'll tell you why. Because they are suffering from the Lazarus effect. They are dead in their mindsets. And they can't see that the true light, the true God, is in them. So what they do is they go find false gods, the government. And sometimes the false gods can be even a pastor or a priest who is not teaching you that you are God in the flesh. Any pastor, any priest, any rabbi who doesn't give you that teaching is a false teacher. That doesn't tell you that the God and the Christ you're looking for is staring at you in the mirror every day. If they're not telling you that, then they're false. And if you're not telling yourself that, then you're just like Lazarus before he was raised from the dead. Whoa. See, I know some people are still stuck on old Christian teachings. But see, we're going back to the original teachings. You cannot be anything or have anything until you become it. You want saving? You got to become your own savior. You got to put in the work. And just to take a little side road, I'm a little bit disturbed by some of the men who call themselves men who can't make a simple decision for themselves. Who cannot look at something and say, this is what I will do. I don't need to get on an email with Akeem or whoever to get this answer when the answer is staring you right in the face. That's not, that's not exercising your God power. That's exercising dead power. That's exercising Lazarus power pre-resurrection. That's what that is. But I hear these same brothers complaining about women. We don't have, brothers, we don't have time to complain about the women. We can't. We don't have time. We got so much work to do for ourselves. Stop concentrating on the women and concentrate on yourself. Get yourself together. Get your mind right. Become the leader in the man you say you want to be. I know all of you who took this journey with me, who who are you know part of the membership and all of that. Some of y'all might be saying, "I ain't sign up for this type of tongue lashing." What did you sign up for? Because a lot of y'all knew me before. Yeah, I, I didn't play with my words before, and I'm not I'm not playing with them now. We got to start representing ourselves as leaders, fellas. And another side rule before I continue this, because this must be said, I get a lot of you fellas calling me about rectifying your child support. Then when I hear your stories, y'all put yourselves in that position. It's all on you. Start taking responsibility for where you are in this child support issue that you got. Yes, I this this now I'm not speaking to the brothers that are honestly behind or they had an issue that came up where it became out of control. I'm not talking to you brothers. I'm talking about you 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 brothers 
who called me with your saw bad stories. And then when I hear your story, I said, wait a minute, hold the phone. You mean to tell me you did what? And now you're complaining why you're in this position? I'm not going to go into any details because, you know, those conversations are kind of private. But they not kind of, they are. But what I'm saying is, you know who I you know who I'm talking to. Get your act together, man. I have children. Most of them are grown. I have one my daughter's fourteen. And I can tell you straight straight up, definitively, I don't have none of those problems y'all got. Was I on child support at one time? Yes. A very my my oldest son, only my oldest son, for a few years, and then somehow it just went away. It, you know, it, I, I could tell you that story, but see, that's when you're working in honest and true, when you really want to do right, when you're doing right, when you spend your last to go pick your child up twelve years, twelve hours away, one way. And 12 hours back, another way, with just enough money to get gas and maybe a snack. Are you willing to do that? And if you're not willing to do that, then I'm I'm telling you straight up, you're sorry. No, I ain't got no money. I can't can't go get, I can't get them kids now because I'm short on money. No, I didn't have any money, but somebody gave me some money to go. I didn't let not money not stop me or stop me from go getting my son. Now my son's my oldest son stays with me now, him and my grandson, they stay here with me. I'm not saying this to brag. I'm telling y'all, y'all can't tell me the BS stories because I it was hard for me when I had money issues and, and when I went through to to spend time with my son. And the and the women that I was with at that time always supported me in that. When I did that, they they, they, they listen. My very first wife, or my second wife, whatever. When it comes to my children, I don't get any problems because they know the type of man I am. When it comes to the children, and in, in my relate, they can call me a lot of things, and one thing they can never say that I was not a good provider. Or I was not consistent. Damn what she doing with her life. I ain't got time to be in her business like that. I got to tend to my own business. Yes, I repeat it. I traveled all the way from South Carolina to New York to pick up my son with maybe a couple of hundred dollars in my pocket. And if you know, gas was pretty cheap at that time. That was enough for gas and maybe some food. And I needed to hold on as much as I, as, as I could, because I still had to go get back and go to work. Imagine that traveling from there to there with a, I think it was less than around 200 bucks. Imagine that. And I, I remember a guy was trying to get out of child support. His child support, literally, y'all not even going to believe it. His child support was $10 a week. And y'all know I hung up the phone on him. But let me get back on this scripture here. And then after he said, do you believe this? 27, yes, Lord, she answered, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who was to come into the world. Are you the Christ? Can someone say to you, I believe you are the Christ, coming to save the world? Are you saying that to yourself? It's okay if you do. Because if you save yourself, then you can save the world. Because it's not by your words that people are saved. They are saved by your actions. 
See, some of y'all are trying to tell people, yo, you need to do this. You got to set up the trust. You got to do your birth certificate. Y'all doing all this chit-chatting. Y'all doing all this talking, but you don't have living examples of what you're doing. You're, you, what you're doing is not showing any fruit. People are not going to listen to that. That's why Jesus had to, he had to let time pass. Let his brother pass on in his dead thinking and then come back and raise him up because that's where the true the truth will be revealed, who he was. After Martha had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside to tell her, the teacher is here and is asking for you. And when Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were in the house of consoling Mary saw how quickly she got up and went out. They followed her, supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. When Mary came to Jesus and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you put him? He asked. So he was troubled by this, not because he he knew he what he was about to do. He was troubled because they was they were sick too. They didn't know the power that resided in themselves. So he had to show them through his example by resurrecting Lazarus that you guys can do the same thing. Jesus wept. You know, for years this 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 confused me. Why did he wept? Why did why did he wept? Why did he 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 cry over this when he knew he what he was about to do? I could tell you why. Because I live it every day. When you watch people, you give them information, and they come to you and they ask you, and they don't apply it. They don't know their own power. And you know that that power is in them, but they just, you see it, but they don't see it. And this is why he wept. They, he didn't wept because they didn't believe, because they, they didn't know that he could raise them. He wept because he, they, he knew that they had the same power. They didn't need him to do it. All they had to do was believe in the God in them. And that's what the Christ represents, showing you what you can do. It's all about you, not putting any other gods before you. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him? But some of them asked, could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept Lazarus from dying? See, here, here come the naysayers. Here come the criticizers trying to kill the kill the power before before the power manifests 38 Jesus once again deeply moved came to the tomb it was a cave with the stone laid across the entrance take away the stone Jesus said lord by now he stinks says Martha the sister of the the dead man it has already been 4 days it has already been completed he has already started to rot in his his stinking thinking his negative ways. And some of y'all are stink with these negative thinkers. Some of, some people out there, that's in your household, that's what's going on. Saying negative things, you give them good ideas, and everything you say, they shoot it down. Instead of seeing the power within themselves that they can do it, that it can happen. Isn't that disappointing? When you when you when you can see the power in someone else? And, and 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 they don't see it for themselves. But the only way you can show them is what Christ did. Only way you can show them is by your own example, by raising yourself up from the dead. Jesus replied, "Did I not tell you if you believe, you would see the glory of God?" So they took away the stone. So Jesus lifted his eyes upward and said, "Father, I thank you that you have heard me." See how he did that? He spoke in the now. He spoke in the present. He said, Father, I thank you. You have heard me. 
He didn't speak in some future tense. He didn't speak, well, Father, thank you for doing this later. See, some of y'all are looking for blessings and looking for your prosperity to come, but y'all saying stuff like, oh, my business is going to be good. My money is going to get right. And when you speak like that, nothing happens. Because there is no such thing as the future. There is no such thing as the past. We only live in this moment. This is all we have. We have infinite moments of now. There's no such thing as time. It's all an illusion. So when you're trying to make things happen for yourself, you have to say, I am a millionaire. I am prosperous. If you want a good relationship, I have a good relationship. I have love in my, in my life. I have a good husband. I have a good wife. I have a great family. You have to speak as if you already have it. You see? See, and that's how they were thinking. Well, if you'd have came before in the past, we you could we could have stopped this. They was they was they were stuck. Instead of looking at the moment, okay, what we what's going on right now? Pay attention. Watch how Christ is moving. Because he's moving with full authority. Are you moving with full authority in your life? No. Some of y'all not. Because as soon as you get hit with a small question, oh, 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 oh my God, I got I to I get on this email, 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 email. I got to call, I got to call. Instead of thinking through. And the answer comes. I don't have anybody I could email and ask a question to. Guess who I'm emailing? Guess who I'm calling? Nobody. Nobody you can see. Because all my answers come straight out to the, the heavens, the higher consciousness of my mind, through the ancestors that work through me, through the God that worked through me. That's where it comes. This is how y'all getting this remedy. Now, do I get aid and, and, and little glimpse from other people who show me things? Yes. Most definitely. And I think that, but that's another avenue of getting information. But most of my encouragement, most of my information comes directly from divine intervention. I don't have anybody, oh, you know, now this guy's I call with, you know, clarifications or certain things, yes. Yes, that's good. But some I see people every time they get a little tippity tap, tap it, first thing they're looking for is a false God to answer their question. I am not God to you. I am not your God. I am my own God. And you are your own God. So the first person, the first God you're supposed to go to is you, your own God within you, working in you. That's your first responsibility. And just to take a little side road before I finish this, it says it right here in Matthew chapter 6. Where is it? Where is it? What is this scripture? Put forth the kingdom of heaven first. Then all these things will, will, will be added to you. What? What, 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 uh, what? what kingdom of heaven? The kingdom of God. The God in you. Go to that God first. Go to your God first. See, so many people got false gods. And the reason why they, they don't get anything because they go into a false God that cannot tell them anything. Give them false direction. Go to yourself. That's what I'm teaching. That's the real teaching I'm teaching. Yeah, I'll teach y'all how to do the. I'm showing y'all where to go get your trust done and do your 1041s and all of that. Yes, that I'm leading y'all down that path. To, you know, do your com commerce properly. But the, the, my main teaching is to teach you how to see yourself as God. And don't be ashamed of it. And anybody that looks down at you or call you blasphemous for you, hey, sorry you feel that way. But that doesn't change the fact that I see myself as God. 
Because me thinking this way has done well for me. Me having that mindset allows me to give myself and my family a good lifestyle of peace, prosperity, and extreme wealth. Now, you could go ahead and continue down the path of those dead preachers, those dead preaching teachings that they've been given all of these years that lead you down the path of go vote for this guy, go see this guy, and all of that, and keep doing that stuff over and over, and, and you see where our people are right now. We're more lost than we ever were. Dancing in the street for some pale face who don't give a damn about you. All right, let me keep going. Let's get back to John. So they took away the stone that Jesus lifted his eyes up with and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me. See, he knew it. There was, there was, a, there was an expectation of greatness. But I say this for the benefit of the people standing here, so they may believe that you sent me. He was only doing it for that, just so they could see. He didn't have to put on that show. He just, you know, he could have did it from anywhere, you know. After Jesus said this, he he called out in a loud, loud voice, "Lazarus, come out!" With authority. The man who had been dead came out with his hands and feet bound in strips of linen and his face wrapped in a cloth. Unwrap him and let him go, Jesus told them. Therefore, many of the Jews who had come to Mary and had seen what Jesus did believed in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. See, some of them went off and snitched. See, th this is going to happen to you. As you raise up in your God power, people are going to snitch on you. They're going to go, hey, he, he thinks he's God. She thinks she's God. He's doing all kinds of things. His family living good. They're going to try to trip you up. They're going to try to hurt you. But don't worry. You'll be fine. You got to go through that. All elevation, all degrees of elevation goes through, goes through a degree of pain. And the pain you're really dealing with is a mental pain. So it's you can deal with that. Just know that that's what it is. A degree of opposition. It's part of the process. When a seed is in the ground, what does it have to do? When you plant a seed, for that plant to get out, what does it have to do? It has to break that seed up. It has to fight its way out. Break it open in order to blossom. That's you. Once you understand your God power, you got to break out of this shell, this dead shell, and, and blossom out into this divine manifestation of the God that you was created to be. So remember, you are God. There's no, you can believe that or not, that's on you. Because you are you are having dominion over something, whether it's you having dominion over your prosperity and, and, and flourishing in that, or you having dominion over your own issues, brokenness, poverty. You having dominion. One way or the other, you got dominion because that is a law of God for you to have dominion. Now, you have to make the choice of what you're having dominion over. Now, if you if your your life is full of poverty and issues and things like that, then you have to change. Hey, listen, I don't want to have dominion over death and destruction and having a Lazarus dead mindset. I want to be the Lazarus post dead. I want to I want to be the Lazarus that got resurrected. I want to be the Lazarus that has the light, a new a new outlook. That's the Lazarus I want to be, and there you have it. Be the God in your life in order to have power. Without power, without that, nothing works. Well, let me change that. Stuff works, but it ain't working for you. It's working against you. All right. <clears throat> I appreciate everybody who took time to listen to that. Oh, that lesson about your God power. Uh, last week, um, uh, 
we, I was in uh, Mexico. Mm. <laughs> Me and Beth was in Mexico. Actually, her birthday is actually today. But um, they had those rules about the test on the way back, so we moved the vacation up. You know, so we have to deal with all these COVID tests and all that. And we had a great time. We stayed at a very nice place, very upscale place. It was it was nice. Um, I'm not going to sit here and brag on it and, you know, and, and talk about it too much because then she'd think I'm bragging. But it was nice. We had a good time. And I, it was a good time for me to recharge and do things and, and that recharge woke me up about some things about myself mostly that I still got some waking up to do, you know? So what I talked about today is not just about you. It's all about me as well. Remember, I always tell you, I'm really talking to myself, but I'm hoping you're getting something out of it. So yeah, we had a great time. And it, it, listen, and w- one thing y'all need to stop doing is some of y'all stop watching the news, turn that stuff off. Because what they talking about Mexico over here ain't happening in Mexico. Okay? Them people are relaxed. They're living their lives. And it's, <laughs> you know, they're, yeah, they're doing, you know, following some of these protocols. But for the most part, those people are living and, and loving life. You can see it in their life. Now, they, you can, they don't, some of them don't have a lot of money, but you don't see any depression in them. Like over here, you don't see that people anxious and upset and uptight. They, 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 these people living, you know, you know, living a, a pretty relaxed life. They're content. And I know that I'm going to have to retire somewhere in some tropical island because my allergies are doing better. Uh, you know, my skin felt really nice and smooth and, and, and healthy feeling. Yeah, you know they see they tricked y'all about the Mexican water, right? See the reason why the the water does you like that over there is because their water is cleaner than ours. And so what happens? You drink that clean water, and all of a sudden your body goes through a cleansing process, which creates you to go to the bathroom a little bit more, a lot more. Yeah. See, they, see, they lie to us so much over here about oh they got they they drinking water is this that and the other. Nah. That stuff y'all got coming out of that tap is nothing but toilet water that they done process and they and they mask it with uh, different chemicals so you don't smell how that water really smells so you don't taste what's really in that water. Y'all do realize they can't get all them chemicals out, them drugs. Y'all, yeah, you drinking tap water, you drinking drugs too. Hey, you know, I hate to tell you. That's why I distill my water. And then I, you know, I know it, yeah, distilled water is purified and you got to get your minerals back. So I do that through either sea moss or uh, shilajit. Uh, so if anybody got a question, comment, put your hands up. If not, I, I had some, I have some teachings I want to teach, but right now, only thing I'm being prompted to do is get this this uh, mind science right. Get these these teachings on showing you that you are the God in your life. You are. That's that's this this. There is no way around it. Until you realize that and become to believe that, and that you are orchestrating everything. There's no God in the sky coming down and doing this. There's no devil after you, but the devil of your mind. Things won't change until you realize that. Oh, hey, I guess with all these people on, nobody got a question? Okay. All right. Well, I'll tell y'all what. What I'm going to do, I'm going to shut it down. Because <laughs> you can only preach for so much for so long. Now, y'all can go take those scriptures, reread them for yourself. And, um,. And, and, and apply them. But see, let me see what I'm going to leave y'all with. Now I'll go back to what I started out with, the prodigal son, because that's how we're acting like the prodigal son. Left home and forgot where our real true power is. But before I go, we got 
Solomon's Tipu show tomorrow at 10 a.m. I know we haven't done it in a few weeks, but we got to get back on track. Um, Jessica and Tasia show, the Divine Connection show every Thursday. And y'all got to give them a hand. They, they, they're they almost a year on the ear. You know, they, they're sticking it out, making it work. And that's a good thing. And then we have the, the Raising Independent Thinkers show on Sunday. Got to give her a hand, too, sticking it out, deliberately creating new content, having guests on. She's got a guest coming on uh, next week, this coming Sunday. Let's see. I know I got the email. Let me see who that guest is. Oh, let me find that email. Okay. It's going to, the show is going to be on literacy strategies for reading with literacy coach Faria, Farida Goodman. So literacy coach Farida Goodman is coming on Sunday as a guest. So tune in on Sunday to, to hear that. Uh, that's going to be a great show. And then we got Monday's The Bombay Show. Um, good brother. Support those shows. All of those people are working with me for a very specific reason because they have very specific talents. And, you know, the ladies that work with me represent what sisters should be striving to be. And I feel like I got something else to say, and I, I, I'm, I'm forgetting. Oh, uh, no. All right. With that being said, Peace.